Why, hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers, sisters, friends, comrades on YouTube. Once again, my family, hello, mom and dad, maybe see you tomorrow, maybe the next day. And my love of my life, I'm sure she's fast asleep right now because I should be even. It's right around midnight and I'm in Tucumcari, New Mexico. I thought, you know, why stop in Santa Rosa? Which, fine, with Santa Rosa, not a bad place. Looked very full though as I rolled by. But this place just has more nostalgia to it. It's Tucumcari, man. <laughs> uh, historic U.S. Highway 66 right alongside of it. I just thought this is this just kind of puts the icing on a very long day's cake. Uh, most uh, uh, the most miles I've ever recorded in one day, and it's it's a it's a wee bit deceiving, mate. It's 833 miles today. I mean, what the um, uh, 12th of um, April. Um, 833 miles now uh, to be completely forthwith um, two hours of that was my drive from Lost Hills California into Kingman so because I didn't get to Kingman until it was about a quarter after 2 a.m. so that still included today's miles and if I'm no mistake, it was about it was about 190 some odd miles or so after midnight. And then I added today's festivities, which was look, let's just face it, it was an ass kicking day. I went from Kingman, Arizona, all the way to Tacoma. No, I didn't. I but I'm in Tucumcari. I don't know. Do the math. That's uh, that's a long run. I haven't even done the math yet. I was so excited to tell you all about it. I came to you ill prepared. But uh, anyway, a really uneventful day, except that, man, I forty from many stretches of it that I felt today. Today is the worst road I have ever been on. It isn't even. It's not even a contest particularly from Kingman to about mile marker 115 or so. Absolutely atrocious. I did a post trip, you know, a little trip around the trip and nothing obvious. And I did that twice today. I did it when I took my break um, in Marietta. Marietta? Moriarty, maybe is what it was. Anyway just east of Albuquerque um, took a half hour there uh, packed it full of fuel and hit the road uh, did it uh, once around there too but I'm gonna have to do an extraordinary pre-trip tomorrow um, and really really have a hard look at these suspension parts man and the tie is because oh my goodness this truck and I got beat up today. I mean, really beat up. This the 40 is horrendous. It is absolutely pathetic. I don't know what these people are thinking. Maybe they think it's a good idea to keep the economy going, to have loves come out in their fancy service truck to fix everybody's tires. Because I did see a few of those alongside the road. Uh, loves trucks showing up to squeeze out somebody's tire for them. It's just ridiculous man I'm telling you absolutely absurd so um but other than that really uneventful um pretty smooth run today and the reason for that which is always the reason is weather is always a factor and if there isn't any you can hammer down man it's it, you can you can throw 600 down a day it's no problem to do if you don't have weather issues like in 
I'm not even going to say the word. I'm not even going to say it. I'm not saying it. Damn it. I refuse to. I'm just not saying it. Um, there's another one that I don't like saying either. You. Starts with a U. Last time I rolled through there, I was in a blizzard. That was on my home time leg for uh, last week. Unbelievable, man. Just the weather this year has just been off this chain. Oh. So, but anyway, if you don't have weather, man, it's hammered down. And uh, we were able to do it. Uh, I didn't stop for seven and a half hours. I, I, that's a long run. I don't care who you are. That's a long run. So, um, that was a a real healthy chunk of my day uh, was that amount of time and it was really cool scenery even it's a lot of up and hill up and hill hmm. up and down hills or up and hill downs I guess is what I was about to say um, and it's it's um, it, it, I wasn't killed with traffic you know there wasn't a lot of traffic there was uh, you know times it was moderate but it was never hired core so that was always helpful but now what this means is i'm in tucum carry so it's going to be so much closer to my destination which is a pilot in fort worth um it seems like it's in like northern fort worth it, it is what it appears um, i haven't studied it a whole bunch but it looks like it's in um northern fort worth area very close to where my delivery is which is great because what i plan on doing is leaving here as soon as i'm able tomorrow which is probably going to be a little bit after 10 a.m and haul ass down to that um pilot down there so i can get a parking spot i got a creative parking spot today at this toucan carry uh flying j that i'm at um but whatever i'm parked curtains are pulled I am gonna go to sleep here ride direct uh, but what I'll do is haul ass down to um, uh, that pilot down there and then hit my folks up and see how they want to handle it because my load won't deliver until five o'clock the next day how about that and then five o'clock the next day is when I have a pickup. I have a pre-trip already ready for me, sitting there waiting. And it's a load from Fort Worth. It's a diary load. And it's going to Clackamas, Oregon to a Fred Maya. And I think that Fred Maya is actually a DC. Uh, that's trucker talk for distribution center. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so I think it's actually uh, the Fred Maya DC in Clackamas, which I've been to before. Uh, it's a live on load, and my appointment time there is at 5.30. So it's like I'm a uh, really on a, a PM shift for this entire uh, outing because the first load, this load, right, that I'm on now... Um, which is stachios and almonds from a wonderful place in Lost Hills. That pickup was 5 p.m. I got out of there about 7.30, 7, 7 o'clock hour. I don't think it was as late as 7.30, but... And then I hammered down to uh, Kingman. Got into Kingman about 2. So, um, yeah, it's just been a p.m. thing. There's some pros and cons to driving at night. Um... The, the biggest con is that I'm not a big fan of it. Um, you know, I'm not really a night guy these days. You know, at my age, I'm more of a solar-powered cat. And um, so running at night is, you know, already a disadvantage. But you don't see as well. You don't see any of the scenery, particularly on this run here in the 40, uh, between Albuquerque and Tucumcari. There's hardly any uh street lamps or anything to light the street up so it's dark i mean really dark the the brightest thing uh, along the whole route 
was the rest areas. That there's rest areas for them truckers. <laughs> Anyways, um, so it's very dark. Uh, animal strikes are of concern because that's when they're out, you know, particularly deer. They like to uh, feed at night and then run across the road. You know what I mean? But I got a big old deer guard on there. They don't stand a chance. I uh, perish the thought, but don't run in front of me because I don't swerve. I just put the brakes on and what happens, happens. I don't know what to tell you. Then I have to make a phone call to risk control and let them know that I done crashed into an animal. We had an animal strike. So that's another disadvantage. Um, um, you know, I think one other disadvantage that is, is oftentimes not really discussed is the, and I don't know if it is or not, but anyway, the, um, you know, impaired drivers, you know, and it's, you know, by today's standards, it's not just, you know, booze, it's, uh, whatever the hell they're on today. And so, uh, you know, most of the time they're out, you know, after 9 PM, you figure, I, mean, I heard a stat one time that said that about 90% of the drivers that are out after 9 PM have some cocktails in them. I don't know how accurate that is by today's standards, but I bet it's accurate with anything or everything um not just booze that was a stat that i had heard a long time ago so no credibility at all but it's just neat to say well i saw a drunkard today no question about it in the albuquerque area he was jam I'm, a matter of fact i even got on the radio and told england i said hey dude just back out of it this dude next to you in that truck is drunk he's holding up everybody it's two lanes I said, dude, just back down. Let that guy go. He's drunk. So just as I said that, of course, it turns into three lanes. And so everybody just kind of scattered around the England truck. But drunkard wouldn't go by the truck. And it was jamming everybody up. There was seven cars behind this dude. And he was lit. You could tell he was lit brr, 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 on the right, brr, 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 on the left. I mean, he was just driving braille it was just stupid so i don't know i just don't get it man it's 2023 you can make a phone call or you don't even have to make a phone call just get on your fancy little app you get a ride home you know it might cost you 25 dollars rather than 10 grand that's just california i don't know what i don't know what happens anywhere else in this country but in california it's ridiculous you're in it at least 10 grand, bro. At least. So anyway, there's the, there's a lot of cons to driving. Some of the pros are that the traffic is is uh, light. You know, there's not a lot of traffic anyway, even during the day for the run that I did today. But, you know, during the nighttime, generally, nobody's out. It's cooler. It doesn't matter if it's winter, summer, spring, or fall. It's going to be cooler. The sun, she ain't a blazing. So that's, you know, helpful. I kind of like that. Um, also, when you get to a truck stop uh, this late and have to leave late in the morning, you can pretty much, even if I wanted to go right now, uh, which I don't, but I could go get in the shower like right this moment. Uh, same thing tomorrow morning. You know, if I'm not leaving until 10, you know, I can get, I could probably walk right into a shower around 9, uh, 8.30 or 9, something like that. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, there's, there's a lot of pros and cons to driving at night. I just don't like doing it. I prefer, it's just because I'm tired, man. You know, it's, I like to see everything. There's a lot of glare on my uh, windows with all my electronics I found myself a couple of times this evening just wanting to change lanes putting the windows down so I could see can't see out the passenger side window very very well you basically just see a red glass on the street um, so you're not really seeing much 
So there, there's another con is that you're, you know, you're at a visual disadvantage for not just scenery, but, you know, traffic as well. And it's one thing for a car to be on the passing side, but it's a whole other thing for the car to be on the suicide. And that's what you got to watch for. You know, you got to watch them on the suicide because they go there. They don't think, they don't care, they don't know. So on they go, right into the old blind spot. I got four mirrors on this side of the of the vehicle right here. But you get right up on my door, I'm not. I ain't going to see you. If especially if you're at my drive tires on the suicide, I won't see you. It won't happen. So good luck, because you won't win that battle either. I can tell you that. I mean, it may end my career, but it might end something else for you. So yeah, you don't want to do that. There's, for big trucks, when you're behind them, there's a passing side and a suicide. Never forget something. See? See? All right, then, y'all. I'm going to bed, man. I am tired. It was a long but extremely productive day. 833 miles in a 24-hour period. And I, I got to say, that's 22, really. 22 hour period 833 miles and that's what a brother gets paid to do right now that's what a brother gets paid to do and then i'm going to bring some miles home going to clackamas that's got to be 1700 from fort worth all the way over to basically almost the left coast you know clackamas is just short of portland south of portland and portland's right on the water so um but yeah, we swivel in Clackamas, way too close to Portland for any anybody not to swivel. So we are swiveling, and right now I'm gonna go ahead and take my shoes off, drop my britches, put on my fancy shorts, and nighty night. You feel me? It's time to go. But once again, swiveling. We're swiveling. I mean, I'm in Tucum carry. I don't know how much I really need to swivel here, but I'm going to be. Oh, oh, oh. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear that? I just locked the doors. Always lock the doors, too. Swivel and lock the door. Diaz Quattro. That's what we're doing. You do know. You, I know you know who love you, baby. I know you know who love you. It's your boy. It's Clydesdale. We're chilling with Leonard's Express. I don't know if it gets any better. I don't have another benchmark one. I'm digging this place. I'm digging this place. We're going to work on getting this truck fixed up. Got an AC issue. I can't stand my lights. But we're Leonard's Express. And if I have a problem, I tell them they handle it. Even if it doesn't get done the first time correctly, we're going to get her done. Okay? because it's Leonard's Express. It's what we do. All right, then? You do know who love you. It's your boy Clydesdale. You all have a great night. Peace!